Welcome to the Visual Studio Code Crash Course. Visual Studio Code is one of the most popular code editors in the world. It is free and it is open source. It is developed by Microsoft and it is available for different platforms. You could click here and see which operating systems are supported. If you don't have VS Code installed, please go to code.visualstudio.com and download it for your operating system. After installation, please proceed. After installation, you could open it up and you'll see similar welcome page. On this welcome page, you could, for example, create new file, open folder, or clone git repository. Also, if you used the VS Code before, you could open recent projects. Here below you might find links to help. Let me close welcome page and let me explain you graphical user interface of the Visual Studio Code. Here on the left you see Files Explorer, you see Search, Source Control with different Git features for your particular project, here is Run and Debug, and here are extensions. In the extensions section you could find which extensions are installed and which are recommended for installation. Also you could very easily search for any extensions and install them. VS Code has many many different beautiful extensions. Most time you'll spend in Explorer and first what you need to do is open any folder with some files. You could click on open folder and if you already have any specific folder with some, let's say, text, HTML, JavaScript or Python files, you could go ahead and open it up. Or you could open any folder on your computer. I could open, for example, project on the desktop and there is project called Images Gallery. I could select this folder and click open. It will be opened here in Explorer and now I see name of the folder, it is Images Gallery. And also below I see contents of this Images Gallery folder. And there are such subfolders as .vs Code, API, Frontend and there is additional file .gitignore. You could expand folders like that, also you could go into subfolders and you could click on any file in any folder to get uh, either a preview of it, if it is for example an image, or in order to be able to edit specific file. For example, if I click on this index.html file, I am able to start editing of this file immediately. Also, as I start editing this file, you see that uh, here is this dot appears and this is indicator that this file was modified. Also here in Explorer, I see open editor section. And in this section you will find all files that are currently opened here in VS Code Editor. And I see single file index.html. Also here I see that there are some changes with this green line indicator. I could undo changes by pressing Command Z or Ctrl Z on Windows like that. And now I don't see any changes in this particular file. I could close it like that and go to another file, for example this one, and now I am able to edit this file as well. Notice that if I single click any file, for example this one, I'll see its name here in italic formatting. And this means that this file was opened temporarily here. And if I single click on any other file, for example this one, robots.txt, manifest.json file will disappear and now VS Code will open robots.txt file also temporarily. If you want to keep specific file here opened, you could either double click on its name here like that and now italic formatting gone. And now if I open any other file, for example this one, robots.txt will be kept in place. Or you could double click any file directly here in Explorer, for example this one, like that. And now index.html file will be also kept here in place. You could close open editors either like that, or you could use open editor section and close editors here. Also you could use this button in order to close all open editors. 
let me open one more, for example this one, and now click on this icon and all open editors will be closed. Also here in the project folder you could collapse uh, any folders manually like that, or if you want to collapse all of them, you could click on this icon and it will collapse all folders in the explorer like that. If you need more space here, you could always hide explorer pane by clicking here or by using shortcut command B on Mac or Ctrl B on Windows like that. Alright, also here in explorer you could very easily create new files and folders by using those icons. Here I could create new file and uh, give it name for example index.js. This file will be created and immediately opened here for editing. And now I could add some text here in this JavaScript file like that. You could remove file by selecting it here, right button click and select delete or using shortcut command delete or control delete. Move to trash. You could create new folders by clicking on new folder icon and for example create new folder called test. Here inside of this folder you could create new files, new file.txt. You could add other files if necessary. You could also create subfolders here like this, subfolder and so on. You could also remove specific folder by clicking on it and using either shortcut or context menu. I will use shortcut for now, command delete like that. And this folder is gone. Great. If you are new to VS Code, you could use embedded help that is already available here in this application out of the box. And help is very powerful. Simply go to help menu. And first you could start with a welcome page that we already saw before. And next you could select getting started menu item. Here in getting started page you could actually perform quick setup of VS Code and learn the fundamentals. Let me click on quick setup and here I see such steps as customization of the look of VS Code with themes and you could very easily change look and feel of VS Code by changing a theme and you could start by clicking on this button pick a theme and here you'll find theme selector. There are multiple themes available in VS Code out of the box and also you could install additional themes if you want to do so. And here you could modify current theme. For example, I could switch to light plus theme. That's how it looks. You could change theme once again and here I already installed a few additional themes like Cobalt Next or Abyss. I could select for example this one and the look and feel of VS Code will be changed. You could modify theme also by going to Code, Preferences and select here Color Theme. You'll find here light themes section and dark themes section. At the bottom here you'll find link to installation of additional color themes. If you click on it, you'll go actually to extensions section and automatically such filter as category column themes will be applied and you will be able to search for any themes or browse between different themes here in those search results. For example, I could click on one dark Pro theme and install it if I want to do so. And afterwards, after installation, this theme will be available in theme selector. Alright, let me close this one and let me close this pane. That's how you could modify themes and how you could install additional themes. Also, there is icon theme in VS Code. And file icon theme defines how those icons near folder names and file names look like. If I expand API for example, I'll see that near main.py file there is python icon. And if you want to modify icon theme, you could go to code preferences and select file icon theme. There are several icon themes available out of the box and also you could install additional file icon themes. Let's install something. Let me go for example to this one and install it. VS Code Great Icons. Now I could select it, select VS Code Great Icons and if I go back to Explorer, I'll see that icons of the folders and files were modified. I could anytime change 
icon theme again, go to file icon theme and select for example material icon theme that was installed by me before. That's how it looks. Great. Let's continue with getting started guide and next on this step you could see that VS Code supports over 50 plus programming languages and there are many many different language specific extensions. If I click here I could find such extensions as Python, C++, Jupyter, C Sharp and so on and so forth. Notice the quantity of downloads for example of this particular extension. All right. That's how you could explore extensions for different programming languages. Next, you could enable auto sync of your Visual Studio Code settings across different instances of the VS Code. I don't want to do that. Let me click simply next here. And now you could pick a folder and get started with VS Code. That's what I already did before. Great. Let's go back to getting started guide and if you want to learn fundamentals of VS Code, you could click here. And here you could find how to perform basic operations in VS Code. For example, if you click on this first step, you could find out how to find and run different commands in VS Code. And if you want to run specific command in VS Code, you could open the command palette by using the key combination command shift P on Mac or Ctrl Shift P on Windows. Like that. And here you could find any command you want to execute, for example, find. And here I'll find option search finding files. If I select it, I will be placed in the search input and here I could search for any occurrences of any text in the files in the open project. For example, if I type here HTML, I'll see that there is HTML found in settings.json file, package-log.json file and index.html for instance. Great. That's how you could open up command palette and perform some actions there. Also, there is integrated terminal available out of the box in VS Code. You could open integrated terminal either by going to terminal menu icon and selecting new terminal or you could use shortcut on Mac it is Ctrl backtick on Windows, I suppose it's also Ctrl backtick. Backtick is located near button 1. Alright, let's go ahead and open terminal. And here it is. In terminal, you could perform any actions that you usually perform in the terminal. For example, I could use cd command and cd, for example, to API subfolder. I could cd back to parent folder. I could list files using ls command and so on and so forth. That's how you could utilize built-in terminal. Also, you could open multiple instances, multiple windows actually of the terminal by clicking on this plus icon. And now there are two terminal windows open. Z shell is default shell on Mac. And I could switch between those two terminal windows here. If I don't need specific terminal window, I could click on this trash icon and this second uh, terminal window was just deleted and now there is only one left. You could always hide terminal window by pressing same key combination Ctrl back tick like this. In the next section you could read about extensions in VS Code and browse recommended extensions. Using extensions you could customize VS Code and add a lot of different features you could find such extensions as JS Hint, for example, Beautify, Git Project Manager, and so on and so forth. There are thousands of different extensions available. Great. Next, you could read about uh, settings and basically you could uh, modify each part of VS Code using settings. You could go to settings uh, either by selecting Code, Preferences, Settings, or you could use key combination Command Comma or Control Comma. Let's open up settings and here you'll find user and workspace settings. User settings are actually general settings of VS Code for particular user and they will be common for all open projects. For example, here you could modify auto save option. You could search for settings. For example, let me enter here format and I'll find all occurrences of format setting like editor default formatter, format on paste, format on save and so on. Also, you could modify 
settings for a particular workspace. And this will modify VS Code settings only for particular currently open project. In my case, currently open project is images gallery folder. And by the way, I already have settings file here in this images gallery project. It is located in the .vs code folder and such file is called settings.json. It is in JSON format and I could add any settings I like to use in this particular project. For example, there is such setting as editor.tab size that tells that one tab will be represented by two spaces. All right, that's how you could modify user and workspace settings. Let's close this and let's proceed with this getting started guide. And on the last step, you'll find actually link to video tutorials for VS Code key features. If you click on watch tutorial, you will be guided to visualstudiocode.com and here you could watch getting started tutorial if you want to do so. All right, we are done with getting started uh, tutorial and also next you could go to help and click on interactive playground. In this interactive playground, you could play with different VS Code features very, very easily. Let's click, for example, on rename refactoring. And here you could read how you could easily rename specific, uh, for example, function name in the code. For that, you could select book here. Book is actually name of the function. And afterwards, press F2 like that and rename it, for example, to new book like that. And if I press enter now, I'll see that all occurrences of book were renamed to new book. Let's try something else in this interactive editor playground. For example, let's go to snippets. And uh, here, if you type on this line, try, you'll see such suggestion as try catch. And if you select it uh, from this drop down menu, you'll see that VS Code will actually edit JavaScript try catch block for you just only after typing try. You could also add other sections of code. For example, if I type if, I'll see suggestion to add if statement or if else statement. Those statements are JavaScript statements. Great. Let's go back uh, to this list and uh, let's go, for example, to Emmet. Using Emmet snippets, you could very easily and fast create blocks of, for example, CSS or HTML code. If you type something like that, and for example, if I finish typing, I could press tab or go to edit and select Emmet expand abbreviation. Let me simply press tab here. And you'll see that such snippet will be extended to the block of HTML code. There will be UL HTML tag with five children LI HTML tags. And there will be such classes as item one, item two, and so on inserted automatically. Also, I could type such shortest uh, snippet possible. It is just exclamation mark and press tab. And you'll see that VS Code will automatically create a basic HTML document for me with such tags as HTML, head and body. And now you could proceed and add some other HTML tags like that. That's our Emmet snippets. Also, here is link to Emmet uh, cheat sheet and if you want to read more about it, you could follow it. That's how Interactive Editor Playground looks like and I recommend you to go through all those steps in order to get used to VS Code much faster and in order to learn how to use it much faster. Great, it was Interactive Playground and now I would like to show you where to find VS Code shortcuts. You could go to Code, Preferences, and select keyboard shortcuts. And here on this page, you could find all available keyboard shortcuts. I see here in this list shortcuts for Mac. If you are Windows user, you will see key bindings for Windows. There are many, many different shortcuts. Of course, you don't need to memorize all of them. I personally use maybe 10 or 15 of them. For instance, I use delete line shortcut. If you type delete here, you will find such shortcut here, delete line, and on Mac it is command shift K. It allows you to delete lines very fast. If I go, for example, to editor and open main.py file and select this line, 
and press Command Shift K, this line will be removed. In similar way, I could remove other lines like that. I could also undo changes by pressing Command Z key combination like this. Also, I could move specific line or lines by pressing Alt and up or down arrows like this. Again, you don't need to memorize all keyboard shortcuts here from this list, but I recommend you to getting used to using shortcuts in VS Code to become more productive and in order to perform different actions much more faster. All right, that's all for this VS Code crash course. I hope you enjoyed it and I tried to overview most important key features of VS Code. Now it's your turn. Install some extensions, go to themes and modify theme to the one you personally like, create new project or open any other that already exists on your computer and start using VS Code.